Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest. Riker, the NBA schedule is out. We finally get to see who the Toronto Raptors will be matched up against in the Orlando bubble. And there's been some sort of spe- some some speculation on how the sort of teams were ordered, how the schedule was made, because some teams seem to have a much difficult schedule than others, and the Raptors, from the eye test, it looks like they got the the lower stick in this sort of draw. But uh, I'll list out the teams now. We start off playing against the LA Lakers, which will be a fun matchup on August 1st. Then we end up going against Miami, home Orlando, even though there's no fans, Boston, Memphis, Milwaukee, Philly, Denver. So, you know, outside of Orlando, those are a lot of really talented teams a lot of teams that are out there skilled ready to play in this bubble Riker what are your initial thoughts on this schedule the Raptors were presented Ben my initial thoughts because I you presented me the Raptors schedule and I thought this makes sense because you're gonna have the most exciting games you're going to pin the top of the east against the top of the east to ensure that over the stretch of eight games there's gonna be no contention over the seating right you're just gonna have It'll, it'll make sense. So I thought this makes sense. We're gonna we're gonna play against the best of the East and then toss in a couple of exciting West games, parody, right? That's what I thought. But then I saw the rest. You showed me the rest of the scheduling, and you have our biggest competitors in the East: the Boston's, the 76ers, right? The Milwaukee's, and they seem to have a much more relaxed, a much easier schedule. And to me, that does raise a couple question marks. It raises a couple of eyebrows, Ben. I think that the Raptors definitely got the short draw with this one. And uh, I'm not saying that there's sort of maybe any intentions behind it, but I think in, in the way that it'll play out, Raptors are at a disadvantage, Ben. Yeah, and this is important. This is an important thing to look at, and it's going to be an interesting debate. And I guess we'll we'll talk about how it might be a positive thing later because playing against better teams might better prepare you for the playoffs. But the important discussion, the most important discussion surrounding the Raptors having a tougher schedule is, will they be able to maintain that second seed? You know, currently the Boston Celtics are right on the heels of the Raptors. I believe they're three games back of Toronto, you know, fighting for that second seed. And a lot of people I've heard say, oh, well, it doesn't matter if the Celtics catch us because the second round will, won't be an issue because there's no home court advantage. And well, that's true for the second round, the, the current sixth seed, in the, in the Eastern Conference, is the Philadelphia 76ers, Riker. And that will be an immensely more just ridiculous first-round matchup compared to the, the option that we currently have now, which is the Brooklyn Nets or maybe the Orlando Magic. So, you know, it's, it's going to be essential because you look at Boston's schedule and they play teams such as the Nets, the Magic, the Blazers, the Wizards. The only real tough games they have are against us, the Bucks, and the Heat. So, they, they have a much lighter, relaxed schedule, so the Raptors will need to win a lot of games to maintain that second seed, and it, you know we really want to avoid the Sixers in the second round, or yeah, first round, Yeah, but we sorry. can logic our way out of this, Ben, because we, I just said, we both just agreed that the, the 76ers, they have an easier schedule as well, and mm-hmm. we can raise up the point that they've been off on the road, they've been on at home, so, I mean, we're kind of in this situation now that... Is it going to play out more like a home game or is it going to play more like an away game? Like what are the advantages and disadvantages of playing an arena with no fans, right? So because the 76ers, they're one of the most inconsistent teams, I would say. It's, it's um, but they do. They're, they're like the best team in the NBA at home. And they're one of the I think they have a worse record than the Knicks on the road. It's, well, it's I literally insane. made this point, Ben. What was it? They're, yep. the, they're the best. They're the they're the worst best they're the worst best team out there, right? <laughs> of the best teams in the NBA, which they have to be included in that yep. conversation. They are the bottom. They suck mm-hmm. compared to the other best teams because they have such superstar caliber players and they can't string together, you know, a clip of wins. But but my point is, Ben, I don't see them staying in a position where even if the Raptors slipped one seed down that they'd be playing the 76ers necessarily. I, I would think that they have the chance to move up a couple of ranks, especially when you look at, you know, Philadelphia, or not Philadelphia, sorry, uh, Indiana in the mix and um, Miami. I, I, I'm still very skeptical about those teams. And then even Boston, you look at it, I think that if we look at our schedule, you know, maybe we'll lose to Los Angeles and maybe we'll lose to Milwaukee and Boston and Philadelphia could be close. But realistically, the Raptors could come out with, four to six wins i think that's reasonable to say four to six wins and you look at boston they'd need to get you know 
more than the the amount of losses that the Raptors had. And I don't think that it's possible that they're going to go and win eight straight. I just don't think that that's possible, Ben. So I think there is a bit of security in, in the way that the Raptors will probably end up in the seating. Yeah, that's a fair point, and I think the Raptors will be able to maintain that that top or the top sec the second seed, not the top two seed, whatever. But the the game against where the Raptors play Boston is going to be a very crucial game to really see how things are going to happen because the Celtics are going to get a couple easy wins, assuming everything goes as planned. And we don't really know how teams are going to react to the bubble. Some teams might get hot for a stretch. Some teams might get injured. Might get some players get sick. So. It's going to be a very unpredictable situation, which makes a fu- makes it fun for fans looking at the entire league. But when you're watching your own team and you're rooting for your own team, it makes it almost more stressful because you know you don't really know what's going to happen. And the Raptors have a lot of expectations this season, and you know we we want to do well. And I think there's a lot of discussion to be had about possibly making the finals. B-ball breakdown predicted us beating the Bucks in the the conference finals, and we'll be skeptical speculating on all that as we move closer to the the season starting and into the playoffs and all that sort of stuff but you brought up the Sixers cuz uh, yeah I'll list out the teams that the that Philadelphia is playing against they you know their toughest matchup is currently us and the Rockets the rest of their teams that they play against are the Pacers the Magic the Suns the Blazers the Wizards and the Spurs so even with Philadelphia struggling at times throughout the season, we don't know if they'll be good in this bubble or bad because it's neither home or away. I think they'll be able to beat most of those teams, you know, outside of us and the Rockets, and even the Rockets aren't a team like the Lakers or the Bucks. So it, I could see them going up in the stands, but you sort of wrote off the Miami Heat. The Pacers are a team I'm pretty confident we could beat, even though I think they're underrated, but the Miami Heat have been a bit sketchy. I'm confident we'll get those wins, but... I'd honestly, I could see the Heat being more of a f- issue than than the Sixers in a playoff series with the emergence of Bam Adebayo and Jimmy Butler. No, 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 <laughs> no. And first of all, I don't know who you shouted out to say that they have the Raptors going, beating the beating the Bucks and getting to the finals. Who was it? Yeah, uh, B-ball breakdown. B-ball breakdown. They're like, yeah, they're- Even my least favorite podcaster, Colin Coward. My least favorite of all podcasters and sports commentators that exist and i'm not getting into politics i just don't like this dude's takes nothing <laughs> against him i just hate his takes even he said he's interesting don't... to listen to no he's not ben <laughs> he's just he's oh man you know if you want just the opinion that's dumb or that's ban like i'm not gonna get into it but even he said <laughs> the raptor don't be surprised that the raptors go to the finals so there is some respect on the raptors definitely mm-hmm. definitely this yep. season but I don't think I think okay for me it goes Ben Ben Bucks and this is the biggest competition for the Raptors in the playoffs okay in yeah, terms we of agree on Bucks we agree on Bucks and I'm gonna go in order Bucks seventy mm-hmm. Sixers ooh Boston yeah then Miami and I'm just thinking that's one two three four and that okay so what is it Bucks seventy Sixers Miami Boston Pacers Nets, magic. Yeah, then, then the, okay, yeah. Matter. So that was it. Yeah, that was it. So okay, I was just making sure I crossed all all of my all my T's there. Miami to me, they're giving way too much respect. There, there, there's way too much hype on this team. And yeah, Raptors have struggled against them in the regular season. And Bam Adebayo did a great job in clamping Pascal Siakam. And Jimmy Butler is an infamous Raptor killer. But if you look at their overall team, Ben, are you seriously telling me that they threaten you more? In, in, in a potential matchup than the Boston Celtics or the 76ers who have way more size, way more, you know, proven players. And, you know, I would say a more veteran squad because a lot of the output on the Miami team is from their young guys, Tyler Harrow and um, Duncan. Remember that guy that lit us up? Who? What even is his name? Duncan Dun- something. Duncan Robinson. He's been good yeah. this season. He's, Duncan, he's, shooting, like, you know, who, he's shooting like 45% on eight threes a game or something. <laughs> Yeah, exact coming out of the woodworks. Now, if you can play that in the playoffs, hats off to you. But I mean, that just doesn't happen, Ben. You know, you don't have unproven. Go- it, it comes down to veteranship and you know superstardom. The Heat don't have that. Yeah, I, I'm. In Are agreement you more with scared you. of them than the Celtics? The Celtics. And the 76ers? So, it's tough. It's tough because you look at the Sixers, right? And on paper, they still have Joel Embiid. They have Ben Simmons. They have Al Horford, but. Those are three guys that, you know, are good players in the NBA, but 
they can't shoot. Nick Nurse is just going to make a defensive scheme where, you know, you collapse the paint, you let those three guys, you know, no one's going to be able to get inside. And Josh Richardson, he, he's a guy that's been inconsistent throughout his career. Tobias Harris, that man couldn't throw the ball in the St. John's Harbor, you know, when he was playing in that second, you know, that second round last year. So I, I don't think, you know, I, I'm not necessarily worried about the Sixers. They're going to be good defense. We saw how difficult of a matchup they were last year. But again, who are the two best players in that series last season? against us jimmy butler and jj jimmy reddick butler and jj reddick yeah right and now you look at the miami heat bam and Abayo is better suited to go up against the raptors because you know he's a bit more mobile obviously he's not as much of an offensive threat as Embiid, so you know there's less for marcus hall to sort of negate but he has that defensive mobility so to where the point he can match up with a guy like siakam and i think siakam will be able to overcome it but it is still a tougher matchup and then they have the Jimmy Butler, the guy that really pushed us to seven games last season, and they have the players in similar vein to a JJ Redick and a Duncan, in a player like Duncan Robinson, who, to to I agree with you, is not going to be able to perform at that level in the playoffs. It's just you know players, teams suck in on those three types of the types of three point shooters, and you know Tyler Hero, but. Shooting 45% on eight threes a game is still really good, and you're not going to be able to just completely write that off. As much as I really dislike the guy, Kendrick Nunn, he's been a, a solid player for them. Uh, he's Gordon a Dragic. And you yeah, think they, about that 76 er series. I, I mean, it, they brought us to seven on, and how many PPG did Kawhi Leonard have? He must have had 30. And I, I don't know the exact stats, but. I think the games were low scoring, but Kawhi just dragged us through the mud. Like, dragged our put us on his back and took us yeah, away. He must have had Sergi 30 Baca. points per game. So if they're losing output, the Raptors are losing output and they took us to seven games. So, you know, you can't discredit the 76ers and you can't go giving rookies so much credit, Ben. Kendrick Nunn, come on. Good. Duncan they're, Robinson, you, come on. Tyler Harrow, come on. Good. I can't, I they're, can't, they're players. I they can't got, make they that got statement. Dragic. I can't make that they statement got because Andre Godala, they got, they got some players. Dude, I can make the same argument that the Miami Heat of this season are as as much of a championship contender as the 2016 Toronto Raptors, a 50 win team swept by the Cleveland Cavaliers. I well, can we say didn't that get swept in 2016. We won two games in the Eastern Conference Finals. That's true. When did we win our two? Was it a, no? We won one at home and one one away, wasn't it? No, we or won, but away. we got destroyed our first two games. Then Bismack Biombo turned into the best rebounder of all time in those second two games. I think he yeah. broke like Eastern Conference Finals records. That, that's like that's iconic moment. I, I was right thinking. I wasn't thinking of the season prior. I was thinking of that season where we actually went to the Eastern Conference Finals. But either way, what I'm saying is, you can have the best team of all in the regular season. It doesn't mean squat come playoff time. And you can't put any reliability on young players. So I don't see how there's more of a threat from the Miami Heat than there is the 76ers who brought us to seven games when Kawhi Leonard was our only output. Like, I, I get where you're coming from. And the, the my one worry about the Sixers is we see Kyle Lowry and Fred Van Vliet go back into the shell that they were in that second round last year with Ben Simmons and I guess... Uh, what's his what's his name uh, Richardson now guarding them with their their tall backcourt and that could be an issue for the team this season but they lack depth even though they picked up a couple guys at the trade deadline they're they just don't have the shooting I'm not offensively I'm just not worried about the Sixers especially with uh, with Marc Gasol ready to to clamp up Joel Embiid I'm not super worried about them the Celtics on the other hand I, I'd put them over the heat and the the Sixers in my opinion you know even though I think their front court, they don't really have anyone to match up with Siakam. Uh, Jason Tatum could do well, but Siakam can just post a guy up that's a similar size to him. You know, I think I think we'll be fine against all those matchups. But if you're telling me, I think we have a better chance of sweeping the Sixers than we do the Heat. But there's a better chance the Sixers might beat us than the Heat do. If that if that argument makes sense, that makes no sense. <laughs> That makes no sense, man. Like the Sixers are just completely unpredictable. They they could they could end up winning the East, or they could be a team that we just trounce with Malcolm Miller and Patrick McCaw. Like I don't know what to expect from the Sixers. Okay, I see your argument, but in terms of the fear factor, all right, and not the lovable show of the early two thousands hosted by one Joe Rogan, but. Just the actual fear induced by an opposing team, then 76ers, the Celtics, the Bucks, 
they're the upper echelon of the East and the Raptors included, but I'm talking about who we'd have to mm-hmm. face. Yep. Yep. The Heat aren't there yet. They aren't there. And how can they be? How can they be with three rookies at the helm, a, one breakout season for their power forward, and Jimmy Butler? I, I just don't I don't see it. But you know what? I, I, I'd be fine with a Heat series because it'd be fun. That would be, I think, the worst series for the Raptors, though, just because we see how aggressive they are. You know, That's another yeah. thing. In the first round, playing Miami, they broke Fred's shoulder. The last they will, you know, li- yeah, they back. will. Pon- they, they, they're violent. You know, yeah. there's no two ways. They're violent. But I would much rather a Celtics series. If the, if we don't face any of the good teams, you know, if we're facing the Nets or the Magic, and we lost to the Nets, didn't we, in the regular season once? Maybe I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I'm not pretty sure, sure they did. I watched the win against the Nets. Yeah, we lost. We, were, we, we lost. Yeah, we lost an the overtime Nets win, wasn't it? Yep, and then we we watched we did the live reaction to the Nets game when we were in Toronto, but I think, yeah, either way, either way, my point is I, I'd be fine with it. I'd be fine with the Heat series. I'd be fine with the Celtics series. We we assume it'll probably go to a Bucks conference finals, but I mean they'd all be interesting, no? Yeah, no, they'd all be interesting, but the path of least resistance in the playoffs, especially in a time where it's so unpredictable in the NBA, is through the Heat. I think... <laughs> <laughs> the Nets, bro. The ne- are you telling they're me not going to make it to the second round, Ben? But no, we're gonna, the, well, what's we the path the of least the resistance through the second round? We're, no, we won't play the Heat in the second round. That's I think that's like impossible to match up with because they're going to be the fourth of the fifth seed unless some random stuff happens. But who's it's our, likely? What's the path of least resistance in the second round? One through three. No, so so assuming we maintain the second seed, we're playing right now either Boston or Philadelphia. Yeah, but they'd have to win their games, no? Or is that the winner? Well, so Boston and Philadelphia. So I was talking about just the first round specifically, right? That's why we need to maintain that second seed. Because if we go to the third seed, it's a Boston-Philly first round to play us in the second round. We play the Nets or the Magic, which would be much more chill. Okay, so hit me with that again. If we slip to the third, we're playing Boston or Philly in the first round? We play Philly in the first round right now. Yeah, but again, you're assuming that they're going to maintain, but they have such well, an easy well, schedule. You'd think Philly, that they're going to rise. You're either, you're either playing Philly, Miami, or Indiana, which are three teams yeah, that I, are much worse than the Nets. I'm telling you, I think it's going to go Milwaukee, for the sake of this argument, Raptors or Boston, mm-hmm. and then you know Philly or Miami there, but then it'll be the last three will be Indiana, Nets, Magic. It would have to be because how are the how is Indiana? What's their schedule? How is Indiana going to pull out wins? Or even if Victor Oladipo is coming back healthy, how are they going to pull out wins against good teams? Well, they they play the Magic, the Suns, and the Wizards, so that's three yeah, wins right there. Done. They play the Heat yeah. twice, which I think they can win one. I no. think they, I think they could beat the Sixers. I think no. they could beat the Rockets. You know, no. they're no. they might not beat the Lakers. I think they well, could. any actually anybody could beat the Rockets. To be fair, the Rockets yeah, exactly. are you know they're crazy. Okay, yeah. I think I think if the Raptors slip, this is my hot take, Ben. Take mm. it or leave it. If the Raptors slip to three, Indiana slips to six. Fair enough, but would you rather play the Pacers or the Nets? For what an excitement standpoint. No, just path of least resistance. The least oh. unpredictability. It, 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 Nets. Nets would be yeah. easier. Yeah. Definitely. Nets would be easier. But the, the Pacers would be more exciting. I think the Raptors would sweep both. Really? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I see. You only have to worry about... Uh, you only In a Pacers series, you have to worry about Sabonis. And you have to shut down um, oh, the their shooters. Some, Don't they have two holidays? They have two holidays... Yeah, the holidays and, have been good. Brogdon, Brogdon, and they been have really um, what's his name? You get lost in his leg tattoos. Oh, um, Jeremy Lamb. He he got injured though. He tore his ACL. Oh, so he's out for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to worry about a couple of streaky outsiders, and you have to worry about a guy who's as good as Nikola Vucevic. So, I, I, you know, and then Old Depot maybe. Like I I would not be concerned about the Pacers, but they're definitely better than the Nets. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I'd much. That's why we need to keep that second seed. And I guess to to send it off. Do you think we will? Do you think that we will? You know, we brought up the schedules at the start. Do you think it's 
reasonably expectable for the Raptors to main even with their difficult schedule to stay ahead of Boston. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, you give your opinion first because I'm going to pull back up the 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 roster here or the what do you call it the schedule here. Give me a yeah, no, so you, I, you sound off first. I think it's possible, but we really don't know what's going to happen. Assuming because everyone's in the same boat, everyone's going to be coming in rusty, not really. Probably the jumpers are going to look bad for the first couple of games, even though they have a bit of training camp. You know, the Raptors were in such a good rhythm, and the Celtics do have an objectively easier schedule. But assuming the Raptors can kick it out and they can get that clutch win versus the Celtics, that would really give us a nice cushion. I I think it will be fine, but it's too un it's it's unpredictable from from my viewpoint right now. Riker, what about you? No, that's fair because I'm looking at it now. I'm like, the Raptor. Okay, they should be able to beat. Miami, Orlando, Memphis, Philadelphia, Denver. That's five games right there, right? So yeah. Boston would have to win all eight of their games in order to tie if the Raptors are three games ahead, right? Mm-hmm. But you look, yeah, you're right. I mean, they'll probably get pounced the first game against Los Angeles. So I don't know if they're going to have the confidence to come back and win against the tough Miami game, which is always chippy if shooting is off like you said it might be, which I very well agree. They'll get their legs back against Orlando, but then they're going to have to beat Boston. Memphis shouldn't be hard, but then Milwaukee will be tough. Philadelphia could be any type of game. And then Denver, you always say, is a dark horse. You you, mm-hmm. you say they have a good team, and they show the Raptors good regular season games. So I, you know, I'm maybe coming in on false hopes, but I would say that the Raptors should win four to six games. I, they should win four to six games, but That's it could fair. come out anyway. I, I definitely I mean- agree. It could come out anyway. We don't know what's going to happen. I think if we beat the Lakers, though, if we beat, the, if we win that first game, that's going to be such a confidence boost. It's going to be in it because every, all the eyes are going to be on that game right there. Everyone wants to see how LeBron's doing, how he comes back, and I believe that's the first game LeBron's playing. So it might be the second, but it's definitely the Raptors first. If we get that one, I, I think things are going to look up for the Raptors. And even though we play the two home teams in Miami and Orlando, being in their home state of Florida. I think we'll be fine, but let's know what you guys think. Do you think the Raptors got the shorter end of the stick with the schedule? Do you think we can keep the second seed? Who do you want to see in the playoff matchups? We covered a lot in this podcast, so comment down below all of your thoughts and all the stuff going on. Uh, we really appreciate you making this far. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, especially the Instagram. It's been popping as of late, so so get on there and follow that. Check that out. Riker, you have any last words? I do, Ben. Hot take. If the late... If the- Raptors beat the Lakers in game one. They're going to lose to the Orlando Magic in game three. That's my hot take. <laughs> well, book it. Book it right here. We'll we'll play this recording if that happens. <laughs> all right. All right. To that, cheers. <laughs>